I should You're like to <laughs> call the meeting to order, please. This is, um, I'll welcome you later. We have to get started with the uh, public hearing. I need to recuse myself. Mm -hmm. I am in conflict of interest. I'm acting for the party the involved. Applicant. The applicant, okay. Thank you, Gilson. Yes. So I should uh, like to uh, ask Council, we have a staff recommendation that Council adopts the agenda for the July 28, 2015 public hearing. What is Council's wish? Councillor Salt and Councillor Torgerson, that the agenda be adopted for the public hearing. All in favour? Carried. All right, this uh, public hearing is for the Village of Vailmont Zoning Bylaw Number 610-2007, Amendment Bylaw Number 741-2015. And I shall read this uh, public hearing statement. This public hearing is being convened pursuant to Section 890 of the Local Government Act in order to consider Village of Vailmount Zoning Bylaw Number 610-2007, Amendment Bylaw Number 741-2015. At this public hearing, any person present who believes that his or her interest in property may be affected by the Village of Elmount Zoning Bylaw Number 610-2007, Amendment Bylaw Number 741-2015, shall be given an opportunity to be heard on the matters contained in the proposed bylaw. However, it is important that all who speak at this meeting restrict their remarks to matters contained in the proposed bylaw, and it is my responsibility as chairperson of this meeting to ensure that all remarks are so restricted. Those of you who wish to speak concerning Village of Vailmount Zoning Bylaw Number 610-2007, Amendment Bylaw Number 741-2015 should, at the appropriate time, commence your address to the Council and meeting by clearly stating your name and address. Then you may give us the benefit of your views concerning the proposed temporary use permit. Members of Council may, if they so wish, ask questions of you following your presentation. However, the main function of the Council members this evening is to listen to the views of the public. It is not the function of Council at this public hearing to debate the merits of Village of Vailmount Zoning Bylaw No. 610-2007, Amendment Bylaw No. 741-2015. Everyone who deems his or her proper interest in property to be affected shall be given the opportunity to be heard at this meeting. No one will be or should feel discouraged or prevented from making his or her views known. After this public hearing has concluded, Council may, without further notice, give whatever effect Council believes proper to the representation made at this hearing. During the course of a public hearing, people sometimes tend to become enthusiastic or emotional. Regardless of whether you favor or oppose any particular application or argument, please refrain from applause or other expression of emotion. Restraint enables others whose views may or may not coincide with your own to exercise their right to express their views and enables all views expressed to be heard in as impartial a forum as possible. And corporate officer. Yes, good evening. Um, Mayor Townsend, members of council. Um, I'm Andrew Young. I'm the um, corporate officer and planner with the village. Um, I'm going to provide again another brief public hearing brief. Um, this is concerning a proposed third reading of Village of Elmont Zoning Bylaw Number 610, uh, 2007 Amendment Bylaw Number 741, 2015. This is a bylaw uh, which is sites. It is a site-specific text amendment um, to the accessory uses and accessory buildings provisions in Section 14.4. Point two of the service commercial C3 zone. The applicants are Steve and Robert Van Haften. They're the directors of the numbered company 1585747 Alberta Limited, the owners of the subject property. The purpose of the application, as I mentioned, is to seek council approval of Village of Elmont Zoning Bylaw number 741-2015, abbreviated which is, as I mentioned, a site-specific text amendment to the accessory uses and accessory buildings provisions in section 14.4.2 of the Service Commercial Zone. In order to support accessory buildings or structures for a mini storage facility 
on the south half of the property that is legally described as of June 23rd, uh, 2015, as Lot A, District Lot 7355, Caribou District Plan, Prince George Plan 46763, commonly described as 880 Beaven Crescent, Valemont. Um, a bit of background, the owner has submitted an application to amend the village's service commercial zone to help facilitate the proposed subdivision of the property located at 880 Beaven Crescent. The applicants have entered into an agreement to sell the north half of the subject property, which includes the existing car wash operation to the operators of the Valmont Recycling Center, which is located on Commercial Drive at present. The operators of the Recycling Center wish to relocate their recycling operations to the car wash site, which would enable them to operate both businesses, be more visible, and hopefully attract more business. Uh, the applicants propose maintaining the existing mini storage operation on the south half of the subject property, subject to Council's approval of the proposed site-specific tax amendment to the service commercial zone and future approval of the proposed subdivision. Under section 14.4.2A, accessory uses and accessory buildings in the C3 zone, no accessory building or structure shall be erected on any parcel unless the principal building to which the accessory building is an incidental use has been erected or will be erected simultaneously with the accessory building. In order to help facilitate the subdivision of the subject property, the owner seeks a site-specific amendment to the C3 zoning schedule in order to exempt the existing mini storage facility from requiring a principal building. Just a moment. The proposed amendment to uh, the C3 zoning uh, schedule which is contained in bylaw number 741, um, reads as follows. Uh, Notwithstanding the provisions of subsection A, accessory buildings or structures for a mini storage facility may be located at 880 Beaven Crescent, Valemount, on the south half of the property, legally described as I've already mentioned. Um, and lastly, normally a site-specific text amendment of the kind that is sought by the applicants would not be supported by staff since it may be seen to establish a poor precedent. However, given that the applicants are unable to place a principal building on the site occupied by the mini storage facility to fulfill that requirement prior to subdivision, as well as the strong interest expressed by the operators of the Valmont Recycling Center to co-locate with and operate the car wash facility, staff are prepared to support their proposed amendment, provided that all of the technical requirements needed to support the subdivision are fulfilled by the applicants. The recommendation, therefore, is that Council, subject to any comments received during the public hearing, give third reading to Zoning Bylaw Amendment Bylaw Number 741, 2015. Thank you. Is there anyone in the Council Chambers or from the public who wishes to make comment about this? Um, Rezoning? Anyone whose property might be affected, either positively or negatively? Okay, if there's none. Nope, yes. I'll ask two more times. All right. Is there anyone who wishes to make comment about this proposal, amendment bylaw, number 841? Once more, is there anyone in the public who wishes to comment on this amendment bylaw? Hearing none, I should like to. Um, yes. Right. I, I gather there were no written comments received. Yes. Otherwise, they would have been included Thank on the agenda. You. Okay. Um, I can definitely. I didn't confirm. see anything here. There's nothing received. Yeah. I also checked the mail today as well. Okay. So. Thank okay. you. Yeah, there has been nothing. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, no public comments to receive. Uh, I'll take, um, I'll just adjourn it now. The public Motion hearing. To adjourn? Yep. Okay. Second. Okay. We don't need seconders for adjournment. Okay. Okay. It's seven o'clock. I'd like to call the meeting to order. And I want to, uh, first of all, invite uh, or be happy to invite and welcome our regional district. 
Director Area H, Danielle Allen. Thank you again for coming, Director Allen. It's always uh, a pleasure to see you and especially to take note of your interest in this area. So thank you. Okay. And we'll try not to keep you too long. I should like a motion, please, to adopt the agenda for the July 28, 2015 regular meeting of Council. Lanchette and Reimer. One addition. Okay, new with one addition. New business. Okay. New business, uh, call it Garfield's Woodworking over here for now. Please. Okay. Thank you. The corporate officer has it then. Um, do you have any background information on the business or do you speak to the council? I'll, I'll speak to it um, when we come to new business. So okay. Not complicated. Good. Any further additions? Hearing none, all in favor of the agenda with the one amendment, or addition rather. Carried. Adoption of the previous minutes. July 14, 2015, regular meeting of council. Staff recommendation is that council adopts the minutes of the July 14, 2015, regular meeting of council. What is council's wish? Mm -hmm. Blanchett and Salt. Are there any errors or omissions? Yes. There are. There's, there is a correction under council reports. Um, it lists myself as doing a report twice. Ooh, I just have to catch up with you in just a moment, please. What page is that? Uh, it'll be on page six of the nine. At the bottom of the page, it has Councillor Reimer, then it should be Councillor Blanchett. Oh. Is it the July 14th? Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. And one more? Yes, and one more, okay. <laughs> uh, then on page seven of nine, corporate officer, resolution 287.15 is an incomplete resolution. Doesn't really state what oh, that's really puzzling. they said. Yeah, that's a thank you. We know what should we actually read it was move signal and carry that council um, send a letter of thanks uh, for the food and refreshments that were provided uh, by the Belmont Community Forest. That's correct. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's it. A former councillor, Joan Nordy, sat in that chair. <laughs> Same with Natalie Olson. For uh, 19 years, and then former councillor Natalie Olson sat in that chair. I'm taking over for them. <laughs> 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 okay, so all in favor of adoption of the minutes as, a, as a corrected, carried. Adoption of the minutes of the June 9, 2015 public hearing. Motion please, Blanchett and Salt. Are there any uh, amendments or corrections or omission? Nothing there? Okay, all in favor, carried. And reporting from the minutes of the July 14, 2015 in-camera council meeting, council reports out, it's July 14, 2015 in-camera meeting decisions to one, accept the proposal by Housing Strategies, Inc. as the winning bid for the affordable housing needs and demand assessments. And so the study and two, to accept the proposal by Cardia Health Consulting as the winning bid for the age-friendly community needs assessment study. There is no resolution required, just that it is, uh, one, it's redacted in-camera council meeting, 14th of July, 2015 minutes. Correct. So do, just needs to be noted and that's yeah, it. That's it. Okay, thank you. And delegations, we have none. Unfinished business, nil. Correspondence for action. The Omanika Beetle Action Coalition request for support for continued collaborative approach. The uh, OBAC letter requesting support. And the staff recommendation is that council approves providing a letter of support for additional funding in 2016 from senior governments for the Omanika Beetle Action Coalition and its collaborative, unified, and cross regional leadership approach to ensure place based, innovation driven, economic diversification, sustainable, and resilient development. I have a motion, please, Blanchette and Salt. Is there any discussion? 
Yes, Councillor Torgerson. I think it's particularly important that we uh, continue this, uh, particularly as the current moratorium on the softwood lumber tariff is nearing its expiry. Yeah. The um, OBAC is in place for good, and uh, the regional district of Fraser Fort George, we supported it last week as well. Right, okay. Is there any discussion further? All in favor? Carried. Okay, the reading file, is there anything that council wishes to bring forward? Yes? On the success by six for Robson Canoe Valley background information, mm -hmm. just like to point out for the public um, that this organization in the past year collected contact information for 44 organizations currently offering community resources and services to families with children six and under in our area between Alberta and Dome Creek. And the information is now available to the public through the attached brochure or which also can be found at the public library, public health offices, Robson Valley Support Society and other appropriate locations. And it's a great little brochure listing all the different organizations that provide recreation, care, um, family activities for all these different groups. So I just wanted to point that out. Good. Would you like to uh, make a motion that we, um, that the village of Vailmount write Kim Thorne a letter? to thank and commend them for their dedication and to say that we celebrate their success. Would you like to make that motion? Sure, I'll make that motion. Okay. <laughs> thank you yeah. for wording it so oh, eloquently what? for me. <laughs> there you go. And seconded by Councillor Blanchett. Any discussion or further comments? It's just a really good organization so to, to help support the different organizations that are providing activities yeah. for the youth and families of our community yeah. and they offer different um, grant options as well yes. so it's, it's a good organization and yes. we really appreciate the work that they're doing. Good and I think they should be thanked and commended for it. So any d further discussion? All in favor of writing a letter? Carried. And then the 7.2 Canada Trust Reduction in Business Hours at Vailmount Postal Outlet. Nothing too serious I don't think. What do you, how does the council feel about it? Seems to be okay. Okay. It's not too too drastic of reduction. That's right. Okay. Okay. Kinder Morgan emergency response brochure. Do you want to make a motion to receive it in order to discuss? Uh, only if you yes. wanted to bring something out to discuss. That's what I mean. Councillor Torgerson, and seconded by Councillor Salt, that that letter be brought forward for discussion. Yes, Councillor. If it pleases Council, I would like to participate in one of uh, KMC's upcoming drills or tabletop exercises, if it's done locally. Uh, perhaps if the tabletop is available uh, online or through teleconference, I would like to attend. All right. I think that that would be very wise to attend. I think it's uh, an excellent um, representation of how very serious they are with regular internal monitoring to detect any changes in pipe and uh, monitoring of pipeline from the air and the ground as well as the ability to isolate the pipeline in the event of an emergency. I don't think most of our um, people, and I don't mean in Vailmont only, but um, in this province are aware of the excellent measures that they employ. And so if there is something local or even a webinar you could bring back a report. That's right, Councillor Salt. They are also one of our partner shareholders uh, as part of our emergency planning committee. Mm -hmm. And they did host uh, an event here a couple of years back um, that really got feedback, seek feedback from the community on their actual update of their res emergency response plan as well. So they definitely are open to having participation and uh, input. And they, they have opened up any other workshops and and hands-on training, so. Okay, there's a phone number there, but there is um, the security uh, coordinator. One is uh, uh, Calgary, and the one that wrote the letter is obviously Vancouver. And uh, I should consider whether you want to either phone either one of them or write them a letter from the village of Fairmount asking if there are any uh, meetings that would be available in the region. Whatever pleases or council. webinars. Whatever pleases council. Okay. Okay. 
so. <clears throat> That's good. Yes, Councillor Salt. I'd also like to know if uh, we have any of the, um, in the first paragraph, they talk about um, that they operate a pipeline, of course, in their community. And as part of their public awareness and outreach efforts, they have a uh, emergency response brochure, which just is a small brochure that gives people some information on what kind of things to look mm -hmm. for. Um, should they notice, you know, I, I myself walk along the pipeline, take my dogs for walks, so I observe and they say they really appreciate that and so that it gives them the chance for early detection of any issues. So I was just wondering if we have any of those brochures handy here at the village office or anywhere else in town that should the public wish to access them, it would be nice to have them available. Well, we can certainly request some. Yes, yeah. yes, and I, I would, you know, they suggest to uh, contact Emergency Response and Security Coordinator Kelly Melanowski at 403, and that's a, probably a Calgary number. And perhaps we could uh, contact them and ask for brochures. Yeah, it said here if you would like additional copies of yes. a brochure, please contact me directly okay. or send an email to Pipeline right. Safety at Morgan. All right, so we have a motion on the floor. You do. Okay, and let's deal with that one first, and then, uh, Councillor Salt, you can make your motion. Okay. So we have, it's Councillor Torgerson's motion. We've got it seconded, do we? Yeah, we do. Okay. Uh, Councillor Torgerson and Salt. Good. Any further discussion on uh, the attendance? Hearing none, all in favor? Carried, and now moved by Councillor Salt and seconded by Councillor Motion? My motion is to request additional copies of the brochure. Should be I don't think you actually need a motion. You can just, no. this can just be handled as direction. direction for yeah. staff. Okay. All right. So you've just made note of that then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good. We have the brochure racks in our um, mm -hmm. entryway, but they could just be in the library. In the library, too. Yeah. Of course, the library would be an excellent place to have it, wouldn't it? Okay. Good. All right. We took our vote. So, administrative reports Work Safe BC's Occupational Health and Safety Workplace Bullying and Harassment Policies. Uh, staff recommendation is that Council receives the report and background regarding Work Safe BC's Occupational Health and Safety Workplace Bullying and Harassment Policies for information and reference purposes. Okay, Councillors uh, Salt and Torgerson. And I, I read it all and I thought, why don't they include mayors and councillors? <laughs> anyway, that's okay. Is there any comment? Hmm? Hearing none, all in favor of receipt? Carried. The 2015 quarterly financial report, staff recommendation is that Council receives the 2015 quarterly budget report for information purposes. Okay, Reimer and Blanchett. And is there any discussion? Yes, I'd just like to thank uh, our finance officer. This was really well put out and easy to read and, and really informative and really a lot of work in there. Okay, anything further? No questions? Okay. So, uh, everybody is ready to vote on the fact that the Council receives the 2015 quarterly budget report for information purposes. All in favor? Carried. Community conversation staff report. The staff recommendation is that Council receives and approves the community conversations public handout. What is Council's wish? Councillor Blanchett? Motion to receive it. Okay, seconded. Torgerson, discussion? Yes. Um, I'd like to thank staff for getting this done quickly. We said at the end of July, and it's the end of the July, and it's going out. Um, again, our apologies that we had to cut it so short. I know there's been a lot of, you know, um, people that weren't happy that it was so short and it was really, you know, hard, so maybe there's something we can do later on to rectify that, but um, this report's really great, and uh, I hope everybody, um, if they have any questions, come and talk to Council, Mayor, and staff, and, yep. They have been. Mm -hmm. Councilor Salt. I think they did, um, did do a good job of capturing the topics of discussion, even though it was a very short and uh, almost like speed dating session, um, they did capture uh, the topics that were discussed and raised and, and 
provided some answers. So I, again, my apologies too that next time will be more of a discussion and not to repeat. Yes, Mr. Young. Yeah, just this also too, for the record, there was a uh, memorial service that was planned for mm -hmm. the uh, following morning. So there was a real need to make sure that the hall was cleaned up. Okay. Hence the shortness of time. Mm -hmm. I made mention of um, that in my memo to uh, council. Okay. Okay. So, um, if there's no further discussion, sorry, oh, more. sorry, I just have a question. Yes. This is going to go out on our website and in the newspaper, or how is it going to be deployed? It'll be available on the uh, website. Um, certainly, this material also will be shared with the local media. Okay. Um, and uh, we can also make. Uh, copies of this and throw it off to the library. Okay, perfect, thank you. Okay, are you ready for the question then? All in favor? Carried. All right, proposed development variance permit for 1431 Grenfell Place. The staff recommendation is that council authorize the staff to issue development variance permit 0315 for the property located at 1431 Grenfell Place, legally described as lot five. District Lot 5708, Caribou District Plan 16593, in order to vary the height regulations in Section 7.38 of the Village of Vailmont Zoning Bylaw Number 610, 2007, as amended to allow construction of an accessory building that is up to five meters in height. Okay, Councillor Blanchett, and second by Councillor Reimer that council authorizes staff to issue the development variance permit. Is there any discussion or any questions? Okay, hearing none, all in favor? Carried. Bylaws and policies, 9.1, Village of Vale Mountain Zoning Bylaw number 610, 2007 amendment, bylaw number 741, 2015, proposed site-specific text amendment to Vale Mount Service Commercial C3 Zone. To reduce okay. Again, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Councillor, can you please clarify um, in what capacity are you I'm acting as notary for the applicant? Thank you. Okay. The staff recommendation is that council gives third reading to the Village of Vale Mountain Zoning Bylaw Number 610, 2007 Amendment Bylaw Number 741, 2015. What is council's wish? <coughs> Councillor Blanchett and Councillor Salt to give third reading. Is there any discussion? Yes, Councillor Torgerson. Um, for Mr. Young, please. Uh, our staff uh, happy that the technical requirements needed to support. The subdivision of this subject property are fulfilled. Yes, we are. Does that answer? No further questions. All in favor? Carried. So I guess we can invite Mr. or Councillor Reimer back in. Eleven point one council reports. Pardon? Oh, new business. Oh, sorry, I didn't mark it in here. You're in new business. All right. Okay. So. Garfield is uh, doing the uh, woodworking with his chainsaw just out here in the frontage road. Um, the last number of years, he's paid two hundred dollars for a business license to uh, uh, work within the. Um, municipal boundaries. Um, I consider that he's kind of a tourist attraction in a way. Um, he, he also spends money locally. Um, he buys his cedar from Jason Alexander. He was purchasing cottonwood from Randy Plamondon and he needs to find another source for that. He buys all his chainsaw materials from uh, the local 
steel dealer. He buys his varnish locally. He employs somebody locally who lives here and pays them. Um, and uh, we're not really doing him a favor. I think he's doing us a favor. Not only is he a tourist attraction in a sense, we get people stopping here and once people stop here, they could look further. Um, but he's also contributing in a very significant way back into our local economy and helping us out. He's only here for two months from late June to late August um, because his wife is employed in the school district back in Alberta where they live. And this year he was he had to pay $225 for his business license which was restricted to three weeks and I don't want to know how that happened or that but I would suggest until we have a chance to review that item that we not kick him out for the rest of this summer that we not charge him anymore and that we let him stay there and continue to do the fine job that he has in both the work that he does and the draw that he has here. He could go to Saskatchewan any day of the week. They don't charge him anything. He's got just as many people that would come there and he wouldn't have to pay a dime for a license or even to stay there. We've got to, you know, I think we need to kind of figure out um, some of the benefits that we have for having people like this in our community and contributing before we chase them out. So. Is there a reason for $225 for three weeks? I have no idea. Are you aware of? Uh, I know something about this. I uh, haven't signed off his business license. Um, Mr. Garfield had applied for a license. Uh, my understanding is that he had applied for a three-week license. Uh, I can look into this further and I can report back to council at the next meeting. Will that be soon enough to help him? Well, as long as we don't um, give him a hard time in the next few weeks till we investigate it. Okay. I think it's worth investigating. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Thank you. Any other councillor comment? Councillor Torgerson, a question? Yeah, it was just 225. Uh, I'm wondering if that's a mobile vendor fee. It is. I believe it is. Yes. For three weeks. I don't know if there's a time frame to it, yeah. but I, I do recall discussing it yeah. previously as a citizen sitting on the Advisory Planning Commission. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll look into it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Do you have a comment, Councillor Salt? I just I know that's a mobile business license as okay. well, and um, we can just clarify because I know in, in past years he has been here throughout the year. Um, so depending on if he only applied for three weeks or if he was restricted, we'll find out mm -hmm. if you can just confirm that for us. Okay. Okay. So is that satisfactory, Councillor Reimer? The corporate officer will look into it. Yeah. If in the meantime he can stay there. Okay. If he's exceeded his three weeks, that we don't give him our time. Okay. I don't think that he will have exceeded just three weeks. I think he's trying to just start it up. Yeah. Just a short time ago. All right. Well, in the event that he has, that we okay. don't. Okay. On day 23, she'll move. Right. Do, you, do we want a motion for that? Just to report. Just direction. Okay. All right. That's good. Okay. So now we are at 11.1 .1, council reports. I'll start with Councillor Torgerson. I had a very lackadaisical kind of two weeks. It was kind of like summer vacation. Um, in the last two weeks, only once did I represent the village of Elmont. I attended a conference called, uh, hosted by BC Hydro and its current ro uh, Aero Reservoir operations. Uh, it was for the Columbia River Advisory Council as well as elected officials. Uh, everyone knows that the arrows are downstream of Ken Basket. Uh, the lower than normal precipitation experienced by the entire province uh, has 
BC Hydro kind of jumping and, and working with the non-treaty storage agreement as well as the Columbia River Treaty. And uh, just a, a report from this is that uh, Ken Basket has maxed out eight weeks early and uh, will now begin to draft. And like I said, historically, this is way sooner than normal. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. That concludes my report. That's fine. Councillor Salt. I think it's uh, almost like summer vacation for a lot of different yes. committees and everything. So I, uh, myself, have had a two weeks uh, holiday as far as any council commitments. Well, that's it for me. Good, thank <laughs> you. Councillor Rammer. I haven't been to any meetings because there were none. But I have had email correspondence with uh, Vermont Community Forest and uh, BCTV. Good. Councillor Blanchett. Um, on July 16th, I did attain, attend the Chamber of Commerce meeting. Um, so the big common thread there is, is how to attract memberships and how to attract members to come to the meetings. You know, what, what, does, what does the business community want from the chamber? That's what we'd like to know. So please approach any of the chamber members, myself, um, and let us know what we can do for you. You know, that's our job, that's our role, that's what we want to do. Um, but we need to know what you need and want from us. Uh, on the 24th, I had a phone conference with RVSS. It was in camera. Uh, and on the 27th, we had a meeting with the new coordinator for the Better at Home. Her name is Kathy Pittman. Um, she's a wonderful woman, uh, really excited about this position. Um, and we had a really good turnout from the committee members. And I think everything's going to be up and running, hopefully by September, for that program. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Who was the Better at Home? 27th. I had some teleconference calls. Columbia Basin Trust and uh, OBAC, but um, cameras are here, but I'm going to tell council anyway. I uh, was calling into the investment committee, uh, Columbia Basin Trust, and I copied the telephone number onto my book and I switched an eight for a six. And when I dialed that 1866 number, etc., etc., I got this is the jitterbug answering service. <laughs> I never knew there was such a thing. <laughs> and uh, then a gentleman's voice did come on uh, that was whatever to leave a number, so I just hung up. But I did get the right number to uh, Columbia Basin Trust Investment Committee. And uh, Chair uh, Greg Deck, who is also a founding board member, said, it wouldn't happen to anybody else, and this is why he would be afraid to sit next to me, because he might get infected with these, <laughs> these calls. <laughs> but our investment committee um, is doing extremely well for the Columbia Basin Trust, just extremely well. And then last week we had regional district board meetings, and we stayed an extra day for Friday. We had our first uh, strategy planning meeting. It was an all-day exercise with all of the directors and the senior staff and it was very productive very productive so I'm looking forward to this council looking at uh, one in the fall okay and that's it okay so uh, I have a recommendation from staff that council receives the verbal reports provided by Mayor Townsend, Councillors Blanchett, Reimer, Salt and Torgerson Blanchett and Salt. Okay, any questions or all in favor? Carried. 12-1, uh, outstanding council resolutions. Staff recommendation that council accepts the list of outstanding previous council resolutions. Motion please, Salt and Torgerson. Are there any questions or any discussion? Comments, none? All in favor then? Carried. And then there's the calendar of events, no motion required. Agenda item number 14-1. This is uh, for public comment. Everyone's quiet this evening. Okay. Well, you were a resident, you graduated from school here, if you want to say a few words. You've been attending some of these now. Um, 
I would like to say that it's nice to return. Um, I attended a wedding uh, this past weekend and forgot how wonderful it is to celebrate something in a small town uh, where everyone watches each other's children and everyone brought uh, food and I just uh, wanted to commend them out for still having that environment because I'm in a big city where we don't and at the same time um, encourage uh, council and the village uh, to embrace change as it comes. So I live in a big city and we're always restructuring and reworking and changing and new supervisors and things going on there changes. So it is wonderful to visit. Um, I still call it home when I come home for holidays. And uh, again, just encourage you to protect that specialist that now now has as a community, but embrace change because everything's changing too. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have your full name, please? Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Trisha Townsend. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Trisha. I'd like to ask a um, yes. Make a comment. Yes. In a, in a previous report, uh, I believe Councillor Torgerson mentioned about the uh, power power provider going in at Kilmina and the possibility of Kalina being closed to uh, the public. And my comment would be, I don't think that's a good idea. Um, has council been able to make any inroads to that, to say to the forestry or whoever is responsible for that, to say this is part of our income here in the valley, a very important part of the income in the valley. Um, we need to we need to encourage people to come here to spend money. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Mrs. Torgerson. Oh, sorry. Yep. Christine Torgerson, yep. 2855 Birch Road. Sorry. Okay. Thank you about that. Okay. I think that should be brought forward uh, to this council through VARDA because is that not a snowmobiling location? The wheels are in motion. The wheels are in motion, but uh, by all means, uh, Varda could bring it forward to the mayor and council here to get official support for their efforts to uh, retain that location for snowmobiling, as well as Chamber of Commerce support. And uh, the local Tourism Society in particular, I think of the motels and the hotels and the restaurants, it's important to them. So there, it can be a full community effort. But I'm, I'm glad that you brought that forward. And um, probably Varda is the association that needs to get this rolling. And I believe, Councillor Torgerson, you are on, you were appointed to Varda, right? The wheels are in motion. Okay, but they need to come here and um, get all the support they can get. Varda alone is not going to achieve it. It's before the province. Yes. Councillor Salt. Uh, have they not also contacted our Area H Director, Danielle Allen? She's working on it as well. Okay, is the Regional District uh, going to submit a support, a letter of support? If I may speak to yes. that. Um, it looks like the, the area that the Carmina is in is not in my area. It's in the, the adjoining... Mm -hmm. Thompson, mm -hmm. Thompson, mm -hmm. Thompson, Thompson, Yeah, okay. Thompson. Okay. So absolutely, if we're asked for a letter of support, we would support that, but it's not specifically in okay. my area, and I don't want to step on anyone's toes. I, okay. Okay. Uh, that's Director Willow McDonald. Yeah. Yes. And I know her, and I Councilor Salt, you yes. know her too? Mm -hmm. She also sits support. on Varda. Okay, um, okay, and we could um, yeah. take her out to lunch. Oh, she'd love that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you for bringing that up. And, and our corporate officer has made note of it, so that's fine. Now, if is there anything else that council wishes to bring forward before we take a motion to proceed in camera? Okay. And no further public comments? Just a motion. Yeah, I do so. actually. Just, uh, yes. Brian Bobke, uh, 1421 Grandville Place. <laughs> um, just on a, I don't know, for different lack of words, I guess. What are the bylaws for, for cat ownership that you have to take? Like, I know if I have a dog, I have to license. 
each year. Mm -hmm. So if it does uh, get caught and wind up in the compound, mm -hmm. the village knows who to send the fine to the owner, correct? Mm -hmm. So now, with the past issues here in the last four to six months, and then again last night, um, if I do catch a cat in a live trap, who do I take it to? Mr. Young? Yes, you would uh, certainly contact the village. Um, Dean Schneider is our final yeah, enforcement officer. And there's, he's giving me the same answers as the local SPCA, as the district manager SPCA, and cats are cute as kittens, but once they become adult cats, there's no real ownership, and nobody seems to own any of the cats in our neighborhood until one goes missing. Have you tried cr contacting Chris Dolbeck and setting up something with her? Because she's very, oh, very no. good. Oh, okay. okay. My next step is to take it to court, like it had happened 18 years ago, and get a local trapper to come and trap with con bears, because it's got to stop and persist. Some of you are aware that I inherited my parents' house. They were for 40 years, and that's their legacy, is their backyard and their palms flower beds. And I'm beside myself, and give up asking the neighbors to keep their cats from shitting in my backyard and using it as a litter box. Excuse the language, but I'm tired of it. So mm -hmm. the place of uh, actually gone to the neighbors last night. When we got home, the uh, neighbors figured that I had poison set out. Um, they took it upon themselves. Poison turns out to be cat bait, and it's uh, borax with honey mixed to keep the ants. Okay. But they were quite adamant that it was poison for the cats. But anyways, I don't know if there's an actual bylaw. Okay. Other than talking with Dean, because Dean figured the same thing that the SBC has figured, that the okay. local game warden has figured, and on and on and on. It's just a run around, so what does the person do? Okay, Mr. Bobke, um, I would like you to call me tomorrow, Okay. and we'll see what we can do. Awesome. That'd okay. Thanks. Good. Great, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So if there are any more public comments, hearing none, I'd like a motion, please, to receive the public comments. Salt and uh, Blanchett. Any discussion? All in favor? Carry. Okay. So yes, please call me tomorrow. And, um, I will. Yes, I agree. Good. I want a, notion, a motion, please, to proceed in camera. Blanchett and Reimer. For consideration of two items for Section 91 of the Community Charter. Okay, including the security of the property and subsection to discuss matters related to labor relations or other employee relations. Okay. So we've got a mover and a shaker. All in favor? Carried.